Okay, back to work then. Uh, this is a topic that it's uh, always a nightmare to all of us, I guess, both radiologists and, and uh, surgeons. Uh, Micro calcifications, how do we deal with them? Okay, why microcalcifications are so important? Because DCI, the 95% of the DCIS presents as microcalcifications in screening mammography. Do we biopsy all of them? No, we only biopsy, uh, we used to say those who are, have some suspicious characteristics or malignant characteristics. The new BIRAS edition now uh, separates the microcalcifications to benign and suspicious. There's no the malignant category. Once they're suspicious, they should be biopsied. It's common sense, actually. The important uh, characteristics of microcalcifications are morphology, distribution, size, number, and their stability over time. I will take one by one. Morphology. If they're round, smooth, or punctate, then they're benign. If they're irregular, amorphous or pleomorphic, then they're suspicious or malignant. Uh, talking about morphology, uh, it means the shape, their shape. You see on the left, those are lobular calcifications and they have this uh, specific teacup uh, image and those are always benign. Those are calcifications in the, in the duct following uh, the track of the duct and this is uh, probably malignant. The other thing is that their distribution. If they are in a group, uh, in small clusters, or they cover a whole segment, then they're probably they're suspicious or malignant. If they're diffuse or they cover a region with no specific uh, with, uh, without any specific architectural characteristics, then they're probably uh, benign. So we see here diffuse, it's, uh, they're away from each other, one there, one there, one there, this is probably benign. This is a region, they cover a region of the breast but with, without following any anatomical structure, so this is probably benign. Those are clustered, small uh, groups, and this is linear, it follows the track of a duct, so this is uh, suspicious. Or segmental, follows the whole anatomy of the lobe, which is again suspicious. The size and the number. Uh, the larger they are, the better. If they are small, uh, they're probably ductal. If they're single, they're probably benign. If they come in a group, they're suspicious. Stability over time, I mean, if the number changes over time, it's a debatable issue. Uh, there are papers uh, suggesting that this could be reliable or other papers suggesting that this is unreliable. So nowadays we consider that as an unreliable factor. So stability is not a reliable factor for benign lesions. The benign microcalcifications now, they can either be on the skin on the blood vessels, they could be coarse, the popcorn-like, uh, large road-shaped, which is because of mastitis, or eggshell-shaped, uh, uh, like in oil cysts or fat necrosis. Those are skin calcifications. Uh, you can see this is the oblique uh, view in mammography, and this is the CC view in mammography. And uh, the main thing, the main characteristic is that they have the same shape, they have the same shape and the same morphology in both views of mammography. This is the typical finding in skin calcifications. Or if you can do uh, a very superficial and suggestive view of mammography, you can see them very close to the skin. This uh, is vascular calcification and you can say that by following the anatomy of the vessel in mammography, and you see that this follows the track of the vessel. Of the vessel. Those are cores, or those that we call popcorn-alike microcalcifications, that are probably in usually in degenerated uh, fibroadenomas. Those are large road, like in mastitis, and this is the excel type, like in fat cysts, or, uh, fat necrosis, or oily cysts. 
Malina Admir Crocker classifications now, it's mostly based on their morphology. If they're fine pleomorphic, uh, if they're fine really small and in a linear distribution, or if they have branching following the tracks of the ducts, then it's probably malignant. You can see here following uh, macro classifications who are fine, who are small, and are following, they're a bit clustered there, and they're following the tract of a duct, the anatomy of a duct. Here again, uh, they're fine, they follow the anatomy, and they also have this branching. They follow the anatomy of the duct again. Same is here. So, uh, summarizing, benign, when they're, when they're diffuse, or in both breasts, uh, if they have round shape, if, they have, if they're scattered in dense breast tissue, we see the skin calcifications, we call it like the tattoo sign because it doesn't change its shape, or its morphology in any view. We have the milk of calcium, which are typically benign, they're probably lobular. Uh, the rod-like, mastitis. Dystrophic, all these cores, or the popcorn alike that are fibroadenoma, based, that are basically found in uh, fibroadenomas. The XL, uh, uh, oily cyst or fat necrosis, the vascular, it follows the track of the vessel, the round, the very nice round shape, and the punctate, but they are diffuse in the breast. They are not in groups, they're not in clusters. And suspicious, on the other hand, uh, where the distribution is linear, they are very fine, uh, and their morphology is not well defined. These are amorphous, but they're benign because they're diffused in the breast. This is amorphous, but it's DCIS because they're clustered. Fine pleomorphic, that means they're very small and they have different shapes, one from another, and you can see that in a magnifying view. Coarse heterogeneous, they are coarse, uh, but they're uh, this, this, they have a irregular shapes and the shapes are different from one to another. The fine linear again following the anatomy of a duct or the fine linear branching again the, the branches, the anatomy of the ducts. We all know that the surgical solution is what used to be hook wire uh, surgical excision. Uh, is there any reason to go directly to surgery with micro calcifications? No, the answer is no. Uh, the answer uh, micro classification should always go through the path of stereotactic biopsy. And the, the reason is, just like with needle biopsies before surgery, if you, have a, you should have a diagnosis when you're dealing with micro classifications before you go on to the definitive care, to the operation, because you need to know what kind of operation you should perform. You can only go to surgery if the needle biopsy, of course, proves malignancy or if the needle biopsy fails. Uh, so stereovacuum-assisted stereo biopsy is the first choice. They, only, they could only fail due to technical reasons, and the only problem with that is, again, the underestimation risk. Technical reasons, sometimes it's really hard with extremely dense breasts, even though uh, the new machines, the Ancor machines we're using, they have a special function for dense breasts, and we, I think we, you can solve this pro problem. If they're located into the axilla or too close to the chest uh, or too close to the skin, those are technical limitations of the setting of the equipment. Uh, in small breasts, again, is a technical limitation for the equipment we use now, and this could change in the in the future in, in, in the future or body limitations that means if the patient cannot stand still for the time needed to perform that body limitations are because mostly because of the spine problems like kyphosis back pain or abdominal pain because the patients on a prone table they have to stay on their face for long uh, if they're very thin very thin because their bones uh, they feel pain in, on the bones from lying on that uncomfortable bed or again, respiratory problems, and of course the patients who are stressed, uh, but we can solve some of them by using mild sedation with an anesthetist. Uh, if you fail to retrieve the radiologic lesion, it means if you fail to get the microclassifications that you wanted to, uh, you, you need to make sure that we 
make an X-ray of the specimen, we have to make sure we have enough microcalcifications. Uh, the optimum is to have all of them, but sometimes it's not uh, it's not achievable. So what we uh, so what uh, it is suggested through the guidelines is have at least five microcalcifications from each uh, from each area uh, of interest. I'm sorry. It's, it's harder if the lesion is too small, less than five millimeters, even though uh, with experience you can overcome that. Uh, Sometimes you can get a good view to the stereotactic table as you have in, in the mammography, so sometimes we can't easily uh, visualize the microcalcification in the stereo table. This is a limitation also. Uh, other problems could be if you don't have a good stroke of the needle, so if they're too superficial and the gun is fired outside the breast, then you don't have enough room for the vacuum for the needle. Uh, now the failure for vacuum-assisted biopsy is down to 1% comparing to the core biopsy, which is about 16%, so vacuum-assisted biopsy, it's, it's a method of choice choice for that. So, uh, when you have uh, microclassifications, you mostly need to know their morphology. So if their morphology is irregular, the shape is, is irregular, if they come into groups, or if they follow the anatomy of a duct, then they're suspicious and they need to be, they need to be biopsied by stereotactic biopsy. And then from the pathology report, if, it's, if the result is benign, then all you have to do is a six months follow up. If the findings are suspicious or malignant, then you should go to uh, surgery. Uh, the underestimation rate uh, is low in vacuum assisted biopsy, but again, if you have a typical ductal hyperplasia, uh, DCIS or LCIS in vacuum biopsy, then you definitely go to surgery anyway. So you actually limit the risk of hyper uh, of underestimation. Okay, it's a nightmare. So the only thing we can do is hope the force will be with uh, be with us. Okay, any questions? Yep. So you have suspicious classifications and inadequate. Uh huh. If you have suspicious classifications, you go to stereotactic bias. Yes. Is there any place in between? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the gray zone. No, I don't think MRI helps us microclassification. Liz, what's your opinion? You're, you're an expert in MRI. I don't think it helps in microclassifications. I don't think, yes, uh, MRI doesn't help in that. Because in the report, a lot of times, microclassification which appear like normally or appear like benign, yeah. benign, but you know, appear is not. Yes. Well, I, I think if we use the Byrad's lexicon, uh, Professor Mendelssohn, it will help us be on the safe side. This is a problem with radiology reports sometimes. They don't give us Byrad's. To make it a little easier, there are only, it's a dichotomy now. It's either benign or suspicious. The distribution, uh, as Dennis was showing you, and as I mentioned yesterday, helps to place it. But it's, that's not a morphologic or a particle morphologic uh, attribute. So if it's not absolutely benign, 
The idea here is unless it's a special case and you know it either it's going to change and coarsen and you see it as rim forming uh, where you may have a, a fibroadenoma or a calcifying cyst uh, or if there's reason for fat necrosis and its evolution. Uh, all of the uh, all else needs to be biopsied. I showed you about six or seven cases yesterday uh, that were real cases and we, they, we just biopsied them. Uh, one of the parts that you need to see, I, I don't know, I guess it practices differ. So in the US almost all, all stereo is done at least with a radiologist uh, because you require really the, the mammal training, the x-ray training to do that. The hardest part is targeting and going, going through the entire process. You need to be able at the end uh, to get back the pathology report and establish concordance. That's key and it has to go into the report. I'm sure that that is done. Uh, the other part of it is before you send your, your samples, and I don't know if you mentioned this or not, Dennis, but you, they need to be x-rayed before they go to pathology. And the cores with calcifications need to be separated, agree, uh, with, uh, separated from the ones without calcifications. Your highest accuracy comes from, from the pathology of the ones with calcifications. The other part of it, too, is, is those people who are doing the stereo need to work very closely with, with the pathologist. Uh, once the cores are in blocks, the blocks are not, all the blocks are not exhausted. Uh, so the blocks are sampled. So the stereo procedure is sampling of calcifications. And those calcifications in the cores are sampled further. So one problem that we've had, and I don't know if anyone else has had this, is that the better your mammography, the, the more calcifications you see, uh, and you're biopsying. And I'm not certain if all of you have access to a Faxitron or some other type of x-ray equipment, uh, either in or near the stereo room, and in pathology as well. So if you are concerned that the pathologist is not looking at the grouping that you targeted but with some other calcifications, uh, then if you can't assure that the calcifications are still, are assured that they are not still in the block, you need to radiograph those blocks uh, and then they can cut deeper into it. So it's really, closing the loop, and it's, it's very important. So this takes us back to the multidisciplinary approach. And mm -hmm. after lunch, we have this panel discussion on that. I don't know if you can tell the practical approach. I mean, if you have micro uh, the next thing you do is have a magnifying view. The next what? Uh, the next Ma thing you ma have a magnifying view. Of, uh, of well, you have the magnified view beforehand. Yes. And, then, and then you have to talk with your radiologist before you decide. If you're in doubt. If you're in doubt yeah. about whether no. or not you have them. Yeah. No, whether or not biosphere or not. So it's still a deep work. Oh, it's definitely a yeah. team work. So you, you have my impact, you talk about it with your radiologist. And then when the results come back, you have to talk with your pathologist. And then you may have to re biopsy. Yes. 